In this session we're going to have a look at how we value inventory using the first in first out of FIFO method. FIFO is one of the main methods of valuing inventory along with LIFO and AVCO. It stands for first in first out and with FIFO we assume that the oldest inventory will be always be used or sold first. What this means is that when we look at the value of our inventory at any given time, that value will reflect more recent costs and will ignore older costs as we will assume that the older stock has already been used. Now here is an example of a stock card. Uh, this is a document used by organisations in order to record receipts, sales or issues and balances of stocks. On the left hand side we'll record the dates of individual transactions. Um, then to the right of that we have three columns where we would record the quantity, the cost per unit and total cost of any stock that's being um, received or purchased. So we'd record the quantity in terms of units or kilograms or litres or whatever unit is being purchased. To the right of that we will record the cost per unit um, that we've paid and to the right of that we'll cal calculate the total cost of the units that have been purchased. Now that total cost is simply going to be the quantity purchased multiplied by the cost per unit. To the right of our receipts columns we'll have um, three columns recording how um, the quantities and costs associated with any sales or issues of stock. Again we'll record the quantities of stock that have been sold, the associated cost per unit of the item sold and lastly the total cost associated with each issue or sale. Now that total cost is going to be the quantity multiplied by the associated cost per unit. Finally we have two columns where we will record the balance of stock held after each transaction. So we'll record both the quantity and the total cost. So let's have a look at a worked example of how we would complete a stock card using FIFO. In our example, on the 1st of February 2013, the business holds an inventory of product X of 20 units which has cost it £42. Now we're going to record the date um, that the inventory has been brought forward on. Um, it's not a receipt or an issue so we don't need to complete any of those um, uh, cells of the table but we do need to record the balance um, so we've got a t quantity of 20 units which cost a total of £42. We then make a purchase of 100 units on the 2nd of February, um, each of those units costing £2 per unit. So we're going to record this transaction in the receipts columns and we'll also update the balance figures. So we record the date, 2nd of February, uh, we record the 100 units purchased, the cost of those 100 units, um, £2 per unit and the total cost of £200 which is simply 100 units multiplied by £2 per unit. We don't need to put anything in the issues columns as nothing is being issued with this transaction but we need to update our balance columns. Well we had 20 units before this transaction we purchased a further 100 units so we now have 120 units on hand. Likewise before this transaction our inventory had cost us £42. We then purchased units which cost an additional £200 so 
our inventory overall now carries a cost of £242. Our second transaction is the purchase of a further 120 units of product tax. This time, however, they cost us £2.20 per unit. Well, we take exactly the same approach um, to recording this transaction as we did with the previous transaction. So we'll record the date of 15th of February, we record the 120 units that have been purchased, the uh, associated cost of £2.20, and we calculate the overall total cost of those 120 units, so that's just £264. We don't need to complete anything in the Issues columns, but we do need to update our Balance columns. So we had 120 units before this transaction, we've purchased a further 120 units, so we now have 240 units on hand. In terms of the cost, well, prior to this transaction, our inventory cost us £242. We've purchased stock costing an additional £264, so overall our stock uh, carries a cost of £506. Our next transaction, however, is an issue or sale of 140 units. Well, this time we're going to be completing the date uh, column, nothing in the receipts columns, but we will record this transaction both in the issues columns and then update the balance columns. We've issued 140 units. Well, that's straightforward enough, but we've now got to calculate what the total cost associated with those 140 units um, will be. Well, the approach that we take with FIFO is that we look and see what is our oldest stock and we'll use that up first and then we will use our next oldest stock and keep going until we've used up 140 units. So our oldest stock on hand is the stock that was brought forward on the 1st of February. Now that has an associated cost of £42 but there's only 20 units of that stock on hand so we will still need to find another 120 units um, that will be uh, used when calculating the overall cost. Well, we had a further 100 units that was bought on the 2nd of February, so we'll use all of that stock that we bought then. So we've now calculated the cost of 120 units but we need another 20 units. So we're going to use 20 units from the stock that we purchased on the 15th of February. So we now have to calculate the overall cost of all of this stock that we are going to issue. Well, we have the 20 units brought forward on the 1st of February. That cost us £42. The 100 units bought on the 2nd of February, that cost us £200. And we're going to take 20 units that were purchased on the 15th of February. Now that was purchased at a cost of £2.20 each. So um, overall we will use £44 of our um, stock that was purchased on the 15th of February. So the total of this 140 units will be £286. So we're going to put that into our table. So we record the quantity being issued of £140, the total cost of £286, and we can calculate just the cost per unit. So that's going to be £286 divided by 140 units. That works out at approximately £2.043 per unit. Lastly, we can calculate the balance. 
Well, we had 240 units before this transaction. We sold or issued 140 units, so we've got 100 units left. In terms of the cost, we had a, a cost of £506 before this transaction. We've um, got a cost associated with the 140 units that have been issued of 286. So if we, if we deduct that, we're left with a cost of £220. Our next transaction is a purchase of a further 80 units of Product X. This time each unit costs us £2.50 per unit. So this is quite straightforward to enter into our stock card. We record the date, 24th of the February. They will then record the 80 units that have been received in the quantity column. The cost per unit is £2.50, so the overall cost of purchasing those 80 units is £200. As we had 100 units before um, this transaction took place, we now have 180 units, and likewise the total cost is the cost of the units that we had before this transaction took place of £220 plus the cost associated with this um, recent purchase of £200. That gives us a total cost of £420. Our final transaction is a further issue of 110 units of product tax. Well, we need to calculate first of all, what the total cost of those 110 units will have been. So we need to establish what is our oldest stock and then we'll use that up and if we require any further units, well we'll move on to the next oldest stock. If you remember, we, will, uh, we have used up 20 units from those uh, that we purchased on the 15th of February. Now that leaves us with 100 units um, remaining from the 15th of February. So we'll use those up first. We will still require 10 units more. Um, so those will come from the 80 units that we purchased on the 24th of February. So we can now calculate what the cost of these 110 units will be. 100 units will be valued at £2.20 um, per unit, so an overall cost there of £220. 10 units will be uh, valued at a cost of £2.50 per unit, so an overall cost of £25. So of these 20, uh, 110 units, there's going to be an overall cost of £245. We can now enter the information into our stock card. So on the 26th of February, 110 units will be issued. The total cost of those units will be £245 and we can calculate a cost per unit being £245 divided by 110 units. That gives us an approximate cost per unit of £2.227 per unit. Lastly, we calculate the balance remaining at the end of the period. Well, we had 180 units before this transaction. We've issued 110, which leaves us with 70 units. In terms of the cost, we had uh, a cost of £420 before this transaction. We've used up £245 um, in this transaction, leaving us with £175 in stock. When we look at our inventory at the period end, um, we can say that we have 70 units of inventory left and it's going to be valued as follows. It's all relating to the items that we bought on the 24th of February 2013. 
So we have 70 units at £2.50 each. That gives us a total value of £175.